All right, guys, it's Mrs. Humanek here, and I'm going to talk to you guys about um, how we are going to be factoring. Um, last class, you guys talked about how we factored using grouping, and so um, today we are going to talk about how to factor using the box method. Now, we used the box method when we multiplied um, our binomials, and now we're going to factor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the common factor out of each row in each column of the box. But first, we are given um, this lovely polynomial here, and it's four terms, okay? So when you're given a polynomial of four terms, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to place these back inside your box, okay? So we're kind of doing the opposite of what we did when we multiplied. And you always take your x squared term and you put it in your first box. And then you always take your constant term and you're going to put that in your last box all right and then your other two terms the x terms we're gonna go ahead and we can place them in these um, these second and third boxes right here now here's the thing it actually doesn't matter if you put the 5x here or here you will end up with the same answer and then we're gonna place our 3x in this box here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our common factors out Okay, guys, so when we do this, I'm going to start and I'm going to pull out to the left. So I look here and I say, what is my common factor between x squared and 5x? And we see that they do not have a common um, integer factor, but they do have a common variable factor. And so we can pull out an x out of both of those. And then we look here and we say, okay, can I, what can I pull out of 3x and 15? Well, they both don't have an x, but we can pull a 3 out of here and we can pull a 3 out of here. So 3x divided by 3 would just give us a, um, so so we can pull a 3 out, so we would have 3 out and then because 15 divided by 5 is also going to be our 3 here, okay? Now we can also, now we're going to go up and we're going to say, okay, what is our common factor that we can pull out of here? Well, we can pull out the highest common factor that we can pull out is going to be an x because this is technically um, the, yeah there's no integer factor we can pull out but they both have an x and then we look here and we see that this is 5x and 15 and the greatest common factor between both of these would be 5 we can pull a 5 out of here we can also pull a 5 out of the 15 so I'm gonna put a plus for my five and a plus for my three. So now we see that our two factors from here would be x plus five and x plus three. So this right here is the factored form of this guy up here. All right, and now we're gonna do it again, okay? And then we're gonna go a little bit more quickly. So we take our first term, two x squared, and our last term, plus 4, and then we can fill these guys in, plus 8x, or, oh, and I'm going to say that's plus x, and I'm going to put, you can either put 1x, or you can just put x. All right, guys? And so what we're going to do is we're going to factor out our greatest common factor of each row in each column. So we look here, and we have they both have an x in common, but look at that. The greatest common factor between 2 and 8 is 2. So we can actually pull a 2x out of the 2x squared and the 8x. And then we'll go here, and out of here, well, the greatest common factor between x and 4, we can't pull an x out, we can't pull an integer out. So really, the greatest common factor that they have in common is just a 1. I'm, I'm going to say that it's a positive one. And then here, 2x and 2x, 2x and 2x squared, our greatest common factor would be an x. And then here, between x, 8x, and positive 4, our greatest common factor between these two that will divide them both evenly is going to be a 4. So then we look here and we see the top of our box and the side of our box gives us our two factors. So we have 2x plus 1 times x plus 4. And this right here is the factored form. Okay?
gonna go ahead and turn on my light so you can see a little bit brighter. All right, let's keep on going. So now we're gonna do our next term. So we have 4x squared, we're gonna put that in our box. And our plus five, which we're also gonna place in our box. And then we can put these guys in, our plus 10x and our plus 2x. And we're gonna find our greatest common factors. So we see between our 4x and our 10x, we can pull out a four and 10. Let's focus on that. Our greatest common factor between four and 10 would be two. And then we can also pull out an x. We look here between two x and five, our greatest common factor would just simply be a one because they don't share any common factors between the integers or the x. We look up here, our greatest common factor between 4x squared and 2x would be a 2x. And our greatest common factor between 5 and 10x would just be a 5. And guys, I want you to know you can always check yourself on these, right? Because 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared. 2x times 5 gives you 10x. 2x times 1 gives you positive 2x. And 1 times 5 gives you that positive 5. So our two factors are going to be 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 5 on this guy. All right. Our, let's keep going. In our first box, we have our x squared. Our last box, we're going to have our positive 54. Then we have a negative 6x and a negative 9x. So we're going to pull out our common factors between x squared and x. Uh, oh, x squared and negative 6x, we have just an x. And then between a negative 9 and a 54, remember if our leading coefficient is a negative 9, we always want to pull out that negative there. And then here, we have x squared and negative 9x. We can pull out an x. Negative 6x and positive 54, they do both share a factor of negative 6. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 would give us 1. 54 divided by negative 6 would give us a negative 9. So now our two factors would be x minus 9 and x minus 6. All right, let's keep on going for number five. We have, um, let's put our, in our box, we got our 2x squared in our first box, our negative 35 in our last box. Then we can fill in the middle terms, the x terms just right here. And now we go ahead and factor them out. So we factor out each row and then each column. So 2x squared and 10x, they, sh they both share a factor of 2 is the greatest common integer. x squared and x both share an x. Negative 7x and negative 35. Well, remember when the leading coefficient is negative, we're going to go ahead and say that would be a negative 7. So that can be divisible by negative 7. And negative 35 is also divisible by negative 7. Then we go here and we say, okay, we have, oh, we're going to start in this column. 2x squared and negative 7x. Can't factor out anything from the 2 and the 7, but our x's, we can factor out an x, not an x squared. That was an accident. And then, and then you guys, we see between the 10x, the positive 10x, and the negative 35. Well, they can't, they don't both have a factor of 10, but they do both have a factor of 5. 10 is divided by 5 evenly, and 35 is divided by 5 evenly. So we're going to say a positive 5 right there, because our 10 has a positive. So now, guys, we can double check, and we can say, okay, x times 2x, 2x squared. 2x times 5 is positive 10. x times negative 7, negative 7. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. So our answer would be, um, we would say 2x minus 7 times x plus 5. Okay? Then we're going to jump over here to number 6. 
So last but not least, we're going to put our first term in our first box, our last term in our last box, our constant term. And then we're going to put our x's. We got negative 10x, and we also have negative 21x. All right. So we look here and we say, let's factor out our rows. 3x and negative 10x. Well, the 3 and the 10, there's no greatest common factor except for 1. But x squared and x, we can pull out an x. We look at negative 21, and we look at 70. And because this leading one is negative, we know it's going to be a negative number we pull out. So negative 21x plus and 70, they both have a factor of 7. 21 is divisible by 7, and 70 is also divisible by 7. Then we look here, and we're going to go in this, this first row. 3x squared and 21x, well, they both share a factor of 3 because 3 divides by 3 evenly and negative 21 divides by 3 evenly. They also, let's see here, x squared and x, they also both share an x. Then negative 10 and 70, you can factor those guys out, negative 10 and 70, they both share a factor of negative 10. And then we do our check, 3x squared, 3x times 3 uh, times x gives us 3x squared, 3x times negative 7 gives us negative 21, x times negative 10 gives us negative 10x, and negative, 70, negative 7 times negative 10 gives us a positive 70. So we are correct, and our factors are going to be x minus 7 times 3x minus 10. All right, so that is how we factor out using the box method. Okay, guys? Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to something that's a little bit more difficult, okay? So what we are going to do is going to flip over to page four. Okay, so as we are looking at page four, what we see on this page is that um, now we are going to be given a quadratic equation, this x squared plus 6x plus 8, and we are going to have to factor this. But guys, on our previous page, I want you to remember that we were given these problems and they were already split up for us into four terms. Now we're given to it when it only has three terms. So we're going to have to figure out what those four terms are so we can put them in our box. Okay? And so, and what I want us to remember is the standard form of a, of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. So the coefficient of our x squared is our a. The coefficient of our x is our b. And the constant is going to be our c. It's very important that we recognize those things. So what we do is we look at our equation, and the very first step that we do is we factor out our GCF, if it's possible. So x squared plus 6x plus 8. These do not share any factors in common. So we do not need to factor those out. And then, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label all of my lovely coefficients. So this is going, my one, or I'm going to identify my A, my B, and my C, okay? So I'm going to identify my A, my B, and my C. So in this equation over here, my A has that understood coefficient to be a one, all right? My B has a coefficient, and we need to pay attention to whether or not it's positive or negative. My B has a coefficient of that positive 6. And last but certainly not least, my C has a coefficient of that positive 8. All right, so now that we've identified that, what we are going to do is we are going to make a lovely little diamond. And we are going to put A times C in the top of our diamond. So what we're going to do is we're going to take my A value times my C value. And so a times c would be 1 times 8. So in this case, my a c value would just be 8. And then we're going to take my b value, all right, and we put that in the bottom. So that's our step 3. In this case, our b value is just a positive 6. So I'm going to put that right in there, all right? And now what we're going to do is we are going to pick two factors positive 8 that will add up to be positive 6. 
all right? So what we need to do is we're going to list out all the factors of 8. Okay, so if I'm going to list up my factor pairs of 8, we know that all factors have a factor of 1. So that would be 1 times 8 would give me 8. Because 8 is an even number, we know it also has a factor of 2. So 2 and 4, that's another one of our factor pairs. And so 8 is not divisible by 3, and then we're back to 4. So these are our factor pairs that we have to deal with. And what we want to do is we want to look and we say, okay, we need to find two factors that can add, that multiply to be our 8, but add up to be our C. Now 1 times 8 is 8, but 1 plus 8 is 9. 2 times 4 is 8, but 2 plus 4 is going to give us our factor that we want here. So if we look at this, these, this is the factor pair that we're going to pick. So 2 times 4 gives us 8, but 2 plus 4 gives us 6. So now that we have this 2 and the 4, this is how we're going to break up our 6x. So what we can do is we can actually rewrite our original equation as x squared plus 2x plus 4x and then plus our 8. So all we've done is we've taken our b, our 6x, and we've split it up into 2x plus 4x. And now when we see this, we can actually build our box. So we can put in our x squared and we can put in our 8. And then in here, we can put in our 2x and we can put in our 4x. And what we see when we can do this is now we can pull these factors out of our box. So let's see here. What factor can we pull out? Let's do our row, x squared and 2x. We can pull out an x, 4x, and 8. We can't pull out an x, but we can pull out both of these are evenly divisible by 4. Now we're going to go into our columns. So x squared and 4x, they both share an x. 2x and 8, they both share. They both are divisible by 2. They can't be divided by x. So guys, we have just found our factors. And our factors would be x plus 4 times x plus 2. Okay? And so if we took this original polynomial, our trinomial, and we factored it, we would receive, we would get our factored form to be x plus 4 times x plus 2. So what we did was we, so I kind of, I didn't really identify the step five. Step five is when we split that term to be 2x plus 4x. And then we factored by box. I chose the box method. And now we need to check. So if we're going to check our factors here, what we need to do is we need to sit here and we're going to say, let's do our double distribution. So x times x would give me x squared. All right. And then we're going to say x times positive 2 would give me plus 2x. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to say 4x times x would give me plus 4x. And then positive 4 times positive 2 gives me plus 8. So our final, and so we're checking it to make sure we get our same answer here. So we see that we have x squared, so there's no other x squared terms. We need to combine our 2x and our 4x to be positive 6x. And then our last term, we just have our plus 8. So we see that x squared plus 6 plus 8 is the exact same, same, exact same thing as x squared plus 6x 6 6x plus 8. So that's if we check our work at the end. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into it and we're going to actually see what we can do here. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and identify these. So our A term in this case would just be our 1 because that's an understood coefficient of 1. And then our, um, our B term in this case is going to be a positive 7. 
and our C term in this case would just be a positive 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to look here and we're going to say, okay, if I'm going to fill in my diamond, I'm going to say A times C. Well, A times C is 1 times 10. And then my B term is just going to be a positive 7. All right. And now what we need to do is we need to find the factors of 10 that will add up to 7. Now, I want to show you guys a kind of a cool trick. All right, guys? So if you're looking on your calculator and you can't, if you can easily think of factors of 10 that add up to 7, that's great. If you can't, I want to show you guys a trick, okay? So one of our tricks is that we can go to y equals, and in here, you can put the number that you, that you need to find the factors for. So we're going to do 10 divided by x. All right? So I did 10, and then I did my little divided sign, and then I hit my x. And now we're going to go ahead and hit second table. And when we do that, we see all of these lovely things. And guys, they give us our list of factors. Whenever they're whole numbers, they are factors. So 1 and 10 is going to be a fact, are two factors of 10. 2 and 5 are two factors of 10. This, those are not going to be factors we find because of this lovely repeating decimal. These are not going to be factors that we find. And then look, guys, it starts back over at 5 and 2. So we know that all of our factors are listed right here. So what we can do is we can look at our list of factors, and we see that 2 times 5 is equal to 10, but 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. So we have found our factors. So what I'm going to say is that 2 and 5 are the factors that add up there. So now what we can do is we can split this 7x term using those two um, numbers we found in our diamond. So now we can say that that is going to be our 2x plus our 5x. So now we have our x squared, 2x plus 5x, and our 10. So now we can go ahead and we can fill in our box. So I'm going to put my x squared, and I'm going to put my plus 10 here. And then we can fill in our other terms, for 2x plus 2x, and plus 5x. Now when we pull these out, we're going to pull out um, on our rows first. So we have x squared and 2x, so I can pull out an x. 5x and 10, our greatest common factor there would just be a 5. x squared and 5x, I can pull out an x. 2x and 10, I can pull out a 2 evenly. So that means our factored form would be x plus 5 times x plus 2. Now we've gone all the way through steps 1 through 6, and now we want to make sure that we can check it. So we're going to go ahead and do our double distribution here. So this is our answer, all right, guys? But we want to make sure that when we multiply it, we get this here. So we're going to say x times x is going to give me x squared x times 2 gives me plus 2x. 5 times x gives me plus 5x. And 5 times 2 gives me plus 10. Now when we combine these guys together, we combine our like terms. And we see that x squared and then 2x plus 5x is going to give me 7x. And then plus 10. So we look here and we say x squared plus 7x plus 10. x squared plus 7x plus 10. So we see that, yay, they do check out. They are the exact same equation. So now we can write this as our official answer. Our simplified form is with no parentheses is x squared plus 7x plus 10. That's what we were given. And our factored form, which we just found, was x plus 5 times x plus 2. All right, let's keep on going. Let's look at number two so we can see some more examples. So now we have our x squared minus 10x plus 16. So now this is the first time we have a negative for one of our things, all right? So what we have is we have our x squared, our a is the coefficient of our x squared. It's just an understood one. And then our b 
is going to be a negative 10. And our C is going to be this 16. So what we want to do is we want to find, we want to go ahead and come start making our diamond. So the top of our diamond is always A times C. So 1 times 16 is just 16. All right. And then the bottom of our diamond is always going to be just our B, which in this case is just negative 10. So our top is 16 and our bottom is going to be negative 10. So we have to find two numbers that add up to 16, I mean that multiply to 16, but add up to negative 10. So if that's the case, this means that these two numbers have got to both be negative because a negative times a negative gives you a positive. So if we look here and we're going to type in 16 divided by x into our y equals and then we're going to say second table to find all of our factors. We want to try to find numbers that multiply to positive 16 but add up to negative 10. So this means I'm going to go in my negative direction. So let's see here. Negative 1 times negative 16 does give me positive 16, but that's a negative 17 when they add up. Ooh, negative 2 and negative 8, that is going to be a positive 16 when they multiply together, but it's going to be a negative 10 when they add up. So we have a winner. So our two factors are going to be negative 2 and negative 8. So now that we've completed our diamond, we can go ahead and we can split our middle term. So this negative 10x actually becomes negative 2x and negative 8x. Now that we've split our middle term, we can go ahead and fill our box in. Our first box is always going to be our x squared term. Our last box is always going to be our constant. And then these two boxes right here are going to be our middle x terms. So we have negative 2x and negative 8x. Now that we've completed our box, after we split our middle term, we are going to go ahead and factor these out. So x squared and negative 2x share a common factor of x. Negative 8x and positive 16. Remember when it has a leading coefficient, we're going to want to pull out our negative. They both share a co they both share a factor of negative 8. They're both divisible by negative 8 evenly. Then we look here and we say x squared and negative 8x. They can both share a factor of x. And then negative 2x and positive 16, if it's our leading coefficient, is a negative 2. So this is going to be a negative. And they both share a factor of 2. That's the greatest common factor they can divide. So that means our two factors would be x minus 2 times x minus 8. So we have found our answer, but we always want to go back and check. So we go here and we say x times x is going to give me x squared. x times negative 8 is going to give me negative 8x. Negative 2 times x is going to give me negative 2x, and last but certainly not least, negative 2 times negative 8 gives me a positive 16. Negative times a negative gives us that positive. So now we're going to go ahead and combine our like terms. Our x squared is a little lone wolf. We don't have to worry about it, but we do need to combine our middle terms here. We have negative 8x and negative 2x, so negative 8 minus 2 is going to give us negative 10x. And then last but not least, we have our plus 16. So we look here and we say x squared minus 10x plus 16. x squared minus 10x plus 16. So yes, they check out. They both work. So we know that that is the correct answer. So our simplified form is the form without the parentheses. And our factored form has our two binomial factors. So we have x squared minus 2 and x minus 8. All right, guys, we're doing good. So now we're going to move on to the next page. 
as soon as I find it. All right, and we're going to do these next four problems. So we're looking here at number three. All right, so now number three is interesting because we have a negative B term and we also have a negative C term. This is the first time we've had a negative C term. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this and we're going to identify all of our terms. So we're going to look here and we say, okay, our A is the coefficient to our x squared, which is just a 1. Our B is going to be this negative 5. And our C term is our negative 24. So now we're going to need to go ahead and fill out our diamond. So our so we're going to make our diamond, and on the top we're going to do A times C. A times C would be 1 times negative 24, so that's going to be negative 24. And then on the bottom, we just have our B term. On the bottom, you have your B. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to find two numbers that multiply together to get a negative 24, but add up to get a negative 5. Now this gets a little trickier, because in order to get a negative number, one of our numbers is going to be positive, and one of our numbers is going to be negative. So if we go back to our calculator to find our factors of 24, we can look here, and we can type in, let's see, I'm going to do negative 24 divided by x. So you still include the, neg you include the negative when you put this in. So I went to my y equals, I typed in negative 24 divided by x, and I'm going to hit second graph to get my table. Now guys, what we can see is we can see all these lovely factors. So 1 and negative 24, they multiply together to get negative 24. But they, they add up to negative 23, so that one doesn't work. 2 and negative 12 multiply together to get negative 24 but they add up to negative 10, so that one doesn't work. But let's look here. 3 and negative 8. 3 times negative 8 gives us negative 24, but 3 plus negative 8 gives us negative 5. So ding, 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 we have a winner right here. All right, so our two factors that we're going to be using are going to be 3 and negative 8. I almost put negative 5. Sorry about that. That's a negative 8. I'm going to fix it because that's going to bug me. Burp. Sorry, guys. All right. So negative. Oh, now it's like gross. I hate it. All right. Negative 8. So now we can split our middle term, and we can say positive 3x minus 8x. So we have a positive 3x and a minus 8x as our middle term. Now that we've split our middle term, we can go ahead and we can fill out our box. So in my first box, I'm going to do my x squared term. In my last box, I'm going to do my constant, the negative 24. And in the other two box, we're going to put our split middle terms. So we have a plus 3x and a minus 8x. Now guys, like I said before, it doesn't actually matter if I put my negative 8 here my negative 8x, my positive 3x. Because either way, when we pull them out, we're going to get the same factors. So now we look here and we say, okay, x squared and plus 3x. We can pull out a x. Negative 8x and negative 24. We can pull out a negative 8. Negative 8 is divisible by negative 8. Negative 24 is also divisible by negative 8. Remember, whenever that leading coefficient is a negative, you want to pull out a negative. Then x squared and 8x, they don't have an integer we can pull out, but we can pull out an x. 3x, positive 3x, and negative 24. Well, that's divisible by 3, and 24 is also divisible by 3, so we can pull out a positive 3. So our final factored form be x minus 8 times x plus 3. And so we have this lovely answer right here. Now we want to check our answer. Now I've been showing you how to check your answer with double distribution, which is great. Um,
And so we're going to keep doing that. All right? So we have, um, let's see, x times x gives me an x squared. x times positive 3 gives me a plus 3x. Negative 8 times x gives me a negative 8x. And then negative 8 times a positive 3 gives me a negative 24. So now I'm going to simplify this polynomial by combining like terms. So I see, okay, I still have an x squared, no other x squareds. Then I see I have a 3x here, a positive 3x, and a negative 8x to get me negative 5x. And then lastly, our 24 constant is all on its own. So we just have a negative 24. And what we see is x squared minus 5x minus 24 is the same thing as x squared minus 5x minus 24. So we checked our answer and we see that they're the same. All right, let's look at number four. Four is interesting because now for the first time, we have an a coefficient of that's not one. So now our a is going to be equal to four. All right, and then our b is equal to 19 and our C is equal to negative 5. So when we're filling out our diamond we look here and we say okay this is A times C 4 times negative 5 is going to give us a negative 20. And then our B term is still just right here at 19. So we are going to need to come up with two terms that multiply together to get us negative 20 but add together to get us negative 19. So what I'm going to do is let's go to our calculator. Alright, so we're going to go to my y equals and I'm going to type in my negative 20 divided by x. Now if you can just think of the terms that fit this, that is wonderful. But if you can't, then what we can do is we can go in and look here. So we can go y equals negative 20 over x. So two things that multiply together to get negative 20 but add up to be a positive 19. So we look at all of our whole numbers. Well, 20 actually has a lot of factors, okay? So I'm going to start down here. 5 times negative 4 gets me negative 20, but together it's a positive 1. 4 times negative 5 gets me a negative 20, but that's a negative 1. 2 times negative 10 gets me negative 20, but that's a negative 8. Ooh, we're getting closer. 1 times negative 20 that gets me negative 20, but it gets me a negative 19. So that means we're really, really close. So we're going to go up and we're going to look at our negative 1 and positive 20. So because this term, the a times c is a negative, we know one of these has to be negative and one of these has to be positive. So we see that our we are going to have negative 1 right here. Because negative 1 times 20 gets us negative 20, but negative 1 plus 20 gets us positive 19. So I'm going to fill in my diamond with a negative 1 and a 20. Negative 1 times 20 is negative 20. Negative 1 times 20, or negative 1 plus 20 is positive 19. So now that we've split our middle term, I can go ahead and put that in here, and I'm going to say, okay, negative 1x plus 20x and we are going to have a nice middle term. So what we do now is we go and fill in our box and we say, okay, my first term, my x squared term is 4x squared. My last term is this, my constant is negative 5. Okay, my, my, now that I've split the middle, my middle terms are right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my negative 1x and my positive 20x right here. All right, and now we can factor out using the box. So 4x squared and negative 1x. Well, they both share, we can't pull out a four, we can't pull out any integers, but we can pull out an x. Now we're gonna look here, 20x minus five. The greatest common factor between 20 and five would be a, 5 and it's going to be a positive 5 
and you'll and we'll see why in just a second because when we do we always match the leading coefficient um, sign okay so that's a positive 20x that's going to be a positive 5 20 divided by 5 is 4 negative 5 divided by 5 is negative 1 so we're good now we look here and we say okay 4x squared and 20x we can pull out well we can actually pull out an integer 4 and 20 are both divisible by 4 and then x squared and x are both divisible by x so that common factor is actually going to be 4x and then here because our leading coefficient was a negative we're going to have a negative here and right here these guys actually don't share um, any common factors except for one one is the greatest common factor they share so that means that our two factors would be x plus 5 and 4x minus 1. Alright, so this is going to be our factored form. Now our factored form, we want to go ahead and check it. So we're going to say x times 4x is 4x squared. We want to make sure that when we multiply, we get the same thing. And then x times negative 1 is negative 1x. And then 5 times 4x is going to get me plus 20x. And then last but certainly not least, 5 times negative 1 will get us negative 5. And when we combine like terms, we see that, okay, 4x squared, we can't combine it with anything else. But negative 1x plus 20x is going to get me plus 19x. And then minus 5 is just still on its own, nothing to combine with. So we see that 4x squared plus 19x minus 5 is the same thing as 4x squared plus 19x minus 5. So those two things check out. So I actually never wrote our answer for number 3, but we'll do that in a second. So our simplified form would be 4x squared plus 19x minus 5, and my factored form is x plus 5 times 4x minus 1. And over here, so this is our answer. This is our factored form. Over here, I forgot to write it down. Our simplified form was x squared minus 5x minus 24. And our factored form was x minus 8 times x plus 3. So if we were asking you to factor these, your answer would be the factored form. All right? Would be this factored form. We have two more, and then we're going to be all done for the day. So now, guys, what we're going to do, now five is kind of special, because what we see is that we have an x squared term, and we have a constant, but we have no x term. So what that means, guys, is we have our x squared term, which our a, our coefficient to our x squared is just one, and then we see that our constant is negative 81 but our B we don't have a B there's not a B in here so that's going to be a zero so now when we fill out our diamond we use one for our a zero for our B because there's no X term and then negative 81 for our constant so 1 times negative 81 a times C is going to be negative 81 oh man that does not look great. I'm going to have to use this again. So that is negative. Oh, man. I think I did it again. Negative 81. All right, guys. We're just going to go with it. Sorry about that. And then our B term is 0. So this one is a little bit different. We are going to need to find two factors that multiply together to get negative 81, but add up to 0. So one up because we have a negative AC, we know these one of these factors has got to be negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to say, okay, y equals, and I'm going to type in negative 81 divided by x, and I'm going to hit second table to get a list of all my factors, okay? So let's see here. We're going to go, so negative 1 times 81, that does not add up to 0. 1 times negative 81, that's not up to 0. And then we look here and we're like, okay, that's not a factor because that's not a whole number. 3 and negative 27 is a factor, 
but those don't add up to zero. Three minus 27 is negative 24. Then we keep going, that's not a factor, it's not a whole number. That's not a factor, not a whole number, not a factor. Hey, look at that, we got a factor. And nine times nine is negative 81, but nine, nine times negative nine is negative 81, but nine plus negative nine gives us zero. So we have our two factors, and it's going to be nine and negative nine. So now that we have found our two factors that multiply to negative 81 but add up to zero, we can kind of split the middle, the middle that doesn't really exist, that is of a b zero. So this would be 9x minus 9x. So now we can go ahead and we can fill in our box. So we have an x squared, and we have a negative 81. But then here, we have a plus 9x, and here we have a negative 9x. And so what we can see is that if we pull out our factors, let's pull out our column, x squared and 9x, all we can really pull out is an x. Then we look here, and we say negative 9x and negative 81. When our leading coefficient is negative, we know we're going to have a negative. Negative 9 and negative 81, they can both pull out negative 9. That divides 9 evenly, and it divides negative 81 evenly. Then we're going to look up here, and we say, OK, x squared and negative 9x, you can pull out an x. And, negative, and plus 9x and negative 81, we're going to pull out a plus 9. So we can pull out two factors here. And so now our factored form is x plus 9 times x minus 9. So this will be our factored form. This should be our answer as long as we check it and make sure. So we're going to go here and we're going to say, OK, x times x is x squared x times negative 9 is negative 9x. Nine, 9 times x is positive 9x. And 9 times negative 9 is negative 81. So now we're going to combine our like terms to get a simplified um, polynomial. And we have x squared. And then we say, OK, let's combine our x terms, negative 9x plus 9x. And that would actually be, well, what is that going to do, guys? That's a zero pair. So look at that. It's going to cancel out, isn't it? Well, that's a beautiful thing. And then all we're left with is a negative 81. And so we have x squared minus 81. And look at that, x squared minus 81. So our answer checks out when we redistribute um, our answers here. And we are going to write our simplified form as x squared minus 81. That was how we were given it. And then our factored form is x plus 9 times x minus 9. All right. Now our very last one, last but certainly not least, we have x squared plus 12x plus 36. So our x squared, our a is going to be a 1. Our b, our x, the coefficient of our b, of our x term, is going to be a positive 12. And then our c, our constant, will be a positive 36. So we fill out our diamond here. a times c is 36 times 1. So that will just be 36. And then our b term is just 12. So we want to find two numbers that multiply together to get 36, but add up to get 12. So what we'll do is we'll go here, and we'll go to our y equals, and we're going to type in 36, because we want to find the factors of 36. We're going to divide that by x. And so what we're going to get Let's see here when we hit second table. We have all these lovely numbers. Wow, 36 has a lot of factors. So 1 times 36 gets us 36, but it does not get us 12. It gets us 37. 2 times 18, that gets us 36, but it also gets us 20. 
3 times 12 is 40, is, um, does get us 36, but it gives us 15. So none of these are working. 4 and 9, they multiply to 36, but they add to 13. Ooh, look at this guy. We got closer with that 13. 6 times 6, that gives us 36, and 6 plus 6 will give us 12. So that means, ding, 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 we found our factors. So we have 6 and 6. All right, and they're both positives. So now that we have found our factors, we can go ahead and split our middle term. So we're going to have plus 6x and plus 6x. And now we can go ahead and fill out our box. Our first term is going to be our x squared. Our last term is going to be our 36. And then our middle term over here would be plus 6x. And then our other term is also plus 6x. So this one will look very familiar on both sides here. So let's check this out. We have, if we go to pull out our factors, x squared plus, if we pull out a factor between x squared and 6x, that's going to give us x. If we pull out a factor between 6 and 36, the greatest common factor between those two can't be an x, because 36 doesn't have an x, but we can pull out a 6. We look here, our greatest common factor between x squared and positive 6 is going to give us an x. And then look at this. Our greatest common factor between 6x and 36 is also plus 6. So our factors here are going to give us x plus 6 times x plus 6. And so how we can rewrite this, I just want to show you guys, which is kind of cool. We could write this as x plus 6 squared, right? It's the exact same binomial times itself. So we can write it as x plus 6 squared. So this is our factored form, but we want to double check and make sure it's actually right. So now we're going to check. x times x will give us x squared. x times 6 will give us plus 6x. Positive 6 times x will give me positive 6. And last but not least, positive 6 times 6 will give us plus 36. So here we go. We are going to combine our like terms. So we have x squared plus, we have 6x here, plus 6x here, that's plus 12x. And then last but not least, we have our plus 36. And so we see that our terms, x squared plus 12x plus 36, is equal to x squared plus 12x plus 36. So our answers check out, and we have it correct. So that means how we're going to write this is we're going to say our simplified form is that x squared plus 12x plus 36. That's our form with no parentheses. And our factored form, what we are going to put is we are going to put this guy as our factored form. So that will be x plus 6 squared, which is the same exact thing as x plus 6 times x plus 6. All right, guys, I know this was long, but this is a... Um, this is a pretty big concept, so we wanted to make sure that we went through each step with you several times. So you guys can go ahead and practice your homework now, and um, we want to see you guys factoring and see how we do. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.